Thank you, thank you. And thank you, again, thank you everyone for um, taking time out of your Thursday to be here. I'm out from Los Angeles. It's just like really nice to uh, have all your hospitality and, and share some of my story. Uh, how many of you are designers? Just wanna, okay, well great, because this, we're gonna talk about the impact of design and music and how it affects people's lives, but moreover, how design makes an impact on, on the human experience and, and how designing something tangible that you can touch, that you can feel, that you can hold, that something that's real um, makes an impact in people's lives. Uh, and, and that's why we're all here as designers, because we want to you know, improve people's lives in the time that we have while we're here on Earth. So, and I, I want to just start by saying, you know, what does it mean to communicate to someone who doesn't speak your language? Uh, while the video is playing, you heard the music of Blind Willie Johnson, and he, his music is very evocative, it's very stirring. He speaks to us without words. He transports us through the language of music. And while his music was playing, there was a series of images that flashed on the screen. All these images told a story of humanity, of life, of culture, of, of, of being a human here on Earth. And those languages, that music, those greetings, they're all part of the Voyager Golden Record, which is on this spacecraft, which is now, today, almost 13 billion miles from Earth. And in 1977, NASA launched two spacecraft, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2, deep into the mysteries of interstellar space. NASA scientists figured out if they sent these air spacecraft at a certain rate, at a certain trajectory, that we would get a perfect flyby all the planets in our solar system, providing for us these priceless images and many more. Attached to each of the spacecraft is a golden phonograph record. It's a message from our civilization to extraterrestrials who might encounter the spacecraft perhaps billions of years from now. You see, the Voyager record contains the story of Earth as expressed in sights and sounds and science from Bach and Beethoven to Blind Willie Johnson, Chuck Berry's on it, Solomon Island pan pipes, West African percussion, birds, humpback whales, human laughter, the rain, a locomotive, the sound of a human heartbeat. It's all woven into a lovely audio poem called Sounds of Earth. And as a graphic designer myself, my studio has been working with two partners this year to release the Voyager record here on Earth for the very first time on vinyl. And we're creating, we've created a 100-page uh, book and a box set that accompanies the three LP jackets. We went to JPL out in California in Pasadena, the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, which is where they launch all the rockets that our country sends into space. And we went deep into their archive to pull all the original images that were encoded on that record. This is the chief librarian at JPL pulling out the, um, the original master record uh, for the pressing of the, of the golden record. And on it are 55 human languages spoken um, in, in all their native tongues, you know, Urdu, Sumerian, Mandarin Chinese, ancient dialects, contemporary dialects. And on the cover of this case is this diagram that explains to the extraterrestrials where it came from and how to play it. This pulsar map is a map of our um, galaxy. By the way, Stephen Hawking thinks that we should not be sending messages to extraterrestrials that tell us where we are. But, um, so why did we do this? None of the creators took it for granted that extraterrestrials would actually understand Sumerian, Nepali, or French. We don't even know if they have ears. That message was meant to convey the spirit of the project to humans here on Earth. You see, the Voyager record was a gift from humanity to the cosmos, to the outer space, but it was also a gift to humanity, and we can learn a lot from it. Carl Sagan was the scientist who led the team that put the record together, and he said, the launching of this bottle into the cosmic ocean says something very hopeful about life on this planet. And the creative minds behind the team of what they decided to put on the record they decided from the outset that there should be no images of war or disease 
famine or poverty, that it should be an idealistic self-portrait. And it's one we can aspire to. And as we consider how to explain ourselves to others out there in the universe, we begin to consider who we are in a much deeper way. So as designers, we have to take Sagan's message, or we can take Sagan's message, and ask ourselves, what will we say to each other uh, when, when we are sharing messages to each other? And how can we convey, through design, the best message uh, to, our, to each other, to remind ourselves of who we are when we are at our best? The Voyager record it lies at the intersection of science and art to spark the imagination. And it provokes questions about our place in the universe. And it reminds us that the future really is up to all of us. Uh, this is, hopefully this video will work. So, oh, there we go. It's really weird to watch yourself speak yourself <laughs> on TV. Just, uh, they just ran that two weeks ago. Actually, it's kind of fortuitous timing because two weeks ago was the actual anniversary of the launching of Voyager 1. And I think uh, the Monday after next is the 40th anniversary of launching Voyager number two. So, um, but we felt like it was when, when my two partners on this project came to me about like releasing the record, you know, we felt like it was critical to design something physical, tangible, 
uh, that honored the legacy of this message in a bottle. Um, this, this book, this is the only time that the images that are all etched on the grooves of the record are combined with the images that Voyager sent back. Um, so, and this is the only existence of this record um, here on Earth. So the other one is 13 billion miles away. So we wanted to create kind of a museum uh, keepsake, a, a piece of, of real value that somebody could really cherish and, and hold as something kind of sacred, which is a different relationship than uh, a sound file or something that you stream. Because you can definitely hear it on YouTube, but when you actually kind of take it out of the box with the um, gold diagram printed on the front, it has a, um, a different reverence that you um, engage with when you pick up the product. And as we look up in the stars um, and we see, you know, either through the laws of astrophysics or um, through uh, kind of astrology of the ancient stargazers, the Romans, Greeks, Chinese, we see that all the stars together, you know, they're all connected, either through gravity or the way we can draw constellations together. And each one tells a story, and a greater story when they're viewed together. And like us, Humans, we all have individual lives, um, and we're all running about going to work. And, but we're all, all connected in our desire to have a meaningful life, a life of value, um, to connect with our family, our loved ones. You know, we all share the same common experiences of love, of loss, of aspiration, inspiration. Um, and creativity is what um, gives us, as designers, this unique capacity to connect to those aspirations and to make an impact on people's lives out there uh, in the mosaic of human life. You know, we can affect how people uh, are inspired, are, um, have creative thoughts, have creative experiences themselves. And through creativity, we connect to the best of that human experience. Uh, and it's a very kind of special job as a designer to be able to kind of make that impact um, in people's lives and, and to inspire them, hopefully. And, uh, but there is this um, nun from the 1960s, six, uh, Sister Corita Kent, and she taught art at the Immaculate Heart College. And she had a, a lot of ideas about creativity that are very inspiring, um, how to connect to creativity through seeing and paying attention and actually doing and following through. You know, this quote is great, that it takes practice to recover this ability to see or before that, the gift of wanting to see. For so many years, we've been learning to judge and dismiss. I've seen it a hundred times. I've looked at it on my iPhone or on, on Instagram, you know. And we've lost the complex details and realities that surround us. And she was friends with all kinds of really famous creators. Uh, Buckminster Fuller, Charles Eames, uh, Saul Bass, Alfred Hitchcock. She had these rules in her classroom you know, of course, like rule number seven is, is a really critical one. Um, but Buckminster Fuller, one of the great American designers and creatives and futurists, said that his visit to Corita's classroom was one of the most creative experiences that he ever had. You know, and rule number four, consider everything an experiment. Um, and it's important to uh, remember how to tap into your own creativity so you can engender creative experiences in others. And that's what makes living life valuable, you know, that we look up from our phones and we have something that inspires us and moves us. And, you know, for 20,000 years ago, we've been trying to tell our story to other humans and to each other. It's like the message in the bottle on the golden record. What would, we, what would you tell the extraterrestrials yourself? What would you tell your fellow human here on Earth? How would you tell your story? What's the best and most effective way to do that? And one of the critical way of doing that is, is music, you know, either through, you know, our earliest days around the campfire, um, or you know, the choir in the Vatican, Bob Marley, a gospel choir. These are all um, methods for humanity to kind of tap into a higher state and to tell our story as humans. And we, we connect to the human experience through music. And it doesn't matter if it's Wagner and a huge opera or electronic dance music. You know, they're basically the same thing that are really you know, there to transport us, to take us to a different place, to break us from that quotidian day in, day out, going to work, coming home from work, sleeping. It, it rises our spirit up 
um, and, and makes these points in life more meaningful. And, and music marks key parts of our life. When, you, when you've lost a loved one, when you fall in love, when you graduate high school, when you get a great job, you know, or in sorrow and, and, and ch moments of challenge. It also sparks ideas of social change, social justice, songs of protest, um, songs of, of, of active movements. And whether or not it's the Michigan State Marching Band or you know, second line dancing or square dancing, break dancing, it connects us to our tribe. You know, who we are as people culturally, it reinforces you know, who we are um, as, as Americans, as it connects us to our, our families, our cultures, our stories, our histories. And in a digital space, as music is streaming, and it's really wonderful that you can listen to any song, anytime, anywhere, out of the phone on your pocket. You know, how do we connect to the depth of that experience? It's, it's wonderful that, that all those songs, endless amounts of songs are in our pocket now, but how do we have that deeper connection to the way music moves us? And I'm here to say that a lot of that can be connected through um, the art that we create for it and the way the touch points that people connect to it and of course that connects to how you um, feel touch hold experience um, the music itself so you know you can look at a mark rothko painting on your iphone but it's a much different experience when you're when you're actually in the physical space with it and and you spend the time to go to the museum and you sit there and you do it rather than flipping next on you know the tumblr page and I bet if you go to this street right now, if you go to this road right now in London, I, I, I will guarantee you that there are people right now crossing the street doing the, the Abbey Road thing, you know? Uh, and I hear that, like, you know, Londoners like to, like, speed up to try and, like, you know, <laughs> gun down the... Um, but, you know, why, why do people do that, you know? Because they want a connection to what's real. You know, people want to take that selfie of themselves, you know, that, hey, I, I, I'm, here I am at Abbey Road. I proved it. I'm here. I, they, they want that tangible connection to the physical thing. So music still matters. You know, it will always matter. It will always affect us in the ways I just mentioned, you know, as far as moving us and stirring our emotions. But how we connect to it, that's what's changing and that's what's at stake. So as Terry mentioned, we did this magazine um, that's on Accent Opaque, and it's a beautiful magazine. We have some copies for you. And it has a lot of art in it showcasing and spotlighting people that are doing innovative design for music. Um, but the way you can kind of feel the paper and the color really sings off of the paper, um, it tells a different type of story than having all this content on the website. And this initiative that we're doing with the Professional Design Organization was established to come up with ideas of how we can make this experience deeper through design. How can we break people from you know, just looking at their iPhones uh, and, and how can design make a deeper and more impactful experience the way we connect with music. So this is a band, uh, it's part of, the, he's the keyboardist from Wilco. Uh, we, this record just came out, there are two artists and they, um, what they do is they take the sound and video archives from NASA and they remix them into music. Uh, so we, we wanted to tell the story of the music through the art and create a collage and create this die cut piece that really um, is something that you, you can't get online. That, that as you pull this, this sleeve out and this collage that kind of reflects a lot of the elements in the music, uh, it's something that kind of captivates the viewer, that, that creates kind of like that aha moment. Um, here's Quindar doing this kind of live show where they, they take all these visual old vintage slides from NASA and then create kind of new compositions and through that creating new narratives of the music. Um, and hopefully the video will work again this time. Here we go.
Apparently the unboxing videos are like really hip with the kids, you know, who are like taking out the um, sneakers and, and unwrapping them for the first time. I don't know. But yes, as, as Terry mentioned, I, we do a lot of music in my studio. So uh, obviously the, we, we adapt to the changes in technology. And, and the whole Design Plus Music initiative certainly isn't all just about the physical object. You know, how can this kind of innovation um, manifest in the way we experience concerts or experience music in art galleries or also online or on video but also luscious rich album packages and we feel that um, connecting and telling the story of the mu musicians art through art and design is one of our you know core fundamental tasks as designers and through that you know we're hopefully able to tell the musician's story and have that connect with the listener as well. So yeah, some of the some of the artwork that we've created here, you know, the Red Hot Chili Peppers um, with the cake version of their album cover. When I worked with Anthony Kiedis on this, he told me that John Frusciante just had a dream that there was a pool and the sky was in the water, but the water was in the sky, you know. But the way we composed it, it was all about kind of um, Returning to that great 70s epic rock and roll album cover with the small type up in the up in the top We wanted to feel like you know here John Frusciante was back in the band Rick Rubin was back producing this This was the return to the the big epic sound of the Red Hot Chili Peppers, you know, I believe it's still one of um, they're better records, but you know, not because I just did the artwork. And then uh, the Silver Sun Pickups, they're a local LA band, but they've had a lot of success na nationally, you know. And, and the book on the, uh, the blue book on, the, on that side, we, we created this slipcase edition with a fine art photographer, Todd Heido, a very famous fine art photographer, with this luscious book inside that people would pull out and spend time with and value and engage and cherish. Uh, these are two members of the band signing uh, the LPs from uh, the last record that we did. I'm just, I hope it's not too, yeah, okay. <coughs> now you guys can never leave. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, the, the book had all the textures of their neighborhood. It told their story. It gave the, visit, the, the viewer something to spend time with and, and connect with and to feel with. Um, and, and while streaming is great that you can listen to any song anywhere, any place, the experience is much more fleeting. So it's that music that you need to hear when you're working out or the music that you put on when you're cooking at home or you need to relax, the music you work, uh, put on when you, when you start your day. It's a different type of experience that, that you're engaging with art. One's not better than the other, but they're different. And I want to use design and what you can touch, you know, the feel of the paper, the lusciousness of the photographs, the, you know, the die cutting, um, it's, it's, it's those type of experiences that remind people of, of why they appreciate the music. You know, that's actually my handwriting um, there in, on the stage is really weird to see like how I sign my checks, you know, like <laughs> that big, you know, although I, could th I, I don't sign my sex, checks, uh, silver sun pickups, but. But it, yeah, it's it's when you when you um, go to the store and you see people like holding your records, it's 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 nice that 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 circuit is complete because I'm a designer because I want to make an impact in people's lives and and to move people and to create something for them that that's valuable and meaningful. I've worked with this band, Wilco. Um, they're from Chicago. Uh, I've worked with them for over 18 years. I've done like nine records with them and, and, and many other things. And this is uh, the album cover for uh, one of their albums called Yankee Hotel Foxtrot. If you've been to Chicago, these are the Marina City Towers right there at Michigan Avenue and the river. And, and uh, people colloquially call it, you know, the, them the Wilco Towers. This was an article that Vice Magazine ran last year on just kind of like the ability kind of to change the perception of the city's relationship to those buildings, you know, and, and all of these photos, I just went on Instagram and punched in the hashtag Wilco Towers. I don't know who any of these people are, um, but people, you know, post that up there, you know, hashtag Wilco Towers, and it's just gratifying as a designer only for the fact that, you know, we're making an impact in people's lives and, and creating something of meaning, of value that gives people an artistic individual experience. Those socks are meant to look like the building too. So that's, that's, 
That's what that's about. Um, and when you go to the concert and you see the people in the field engaging with the music, buying the show poster, taking the show poster home, that that goes into their house, uh, that's the most kind of fulfilling aspect of the circuit, that, that you are making something that, that people remember, that people have a fond experience with, and it makes their life um, enriched in the process. They have this wonderful uh, music and arts festival every other summer. They just had it uh, two, 2017, so you should go. Uh, 18, 2019 will be the next one. It's in the Berkshires in Massachusetts. We do the programs and the signage and, and all of that. But these, again, are all people, I don't know who these people are, but they you know, cherish what they can hold, what they can touch. And, it um, makes their experience of the concert deeper. Um, and then this is a little bit of uh, a glance at kind of the ecosystem of things that we've created for Wilco, you know, everything from t-shirts to onesies. But it's about kind of like surrounding someone's whole life, you know, with, with all those touch points of experience. Um, so when they do have the show poster at home, um, they, they, they remember that night that they went to the concert and it moved them or that they were on a date or that, that it was a critical point at their, in their life in their college years, you know, and ideally, you know, the art that you create kind of stirs those feelings. This record we just did for the front man of Wilco, Jeff Tweedy, it just came out um, last June. And uh, obviously, the, the record's called Together at Last, and we, we did a jigsaw puzzle. Again, something you can't experience online, you know, and, and we want to, it's more about just driving financial value, but it's about deepening the, the word value in a more spiritual sense, you know, that, that people actually value it and appreciate it and, and look at it and engage at it in, in, as, as the art that it is and have an artistic experience themselves. We worked on the record for Sting, and then of course, with an artist like that, you're able to kind of have a much broader cultural reach and a, and a broader impact. Um, this is a little behind the scenes uh, of, of shooting, sh shooting Sting at, at 59. The, the man, we did a lot of retouching on him, but he really didn't need it at that age. All the yoga, it was just kind of like, <laughs> yeah. It was five in the morning for me, and then I was still on LA time, so that was like three in the morning. And um, it's, I don't understand how the guy is so fit, but you know. Uh, but again, you know, just looking at how people connect to their own um, experience, and that you know, for a Sting fan, um, this package had like a bunch of different postcards in it, and. Um, it's just something that for, for people to kind of cherish and, and connect to more of this the sting story um, but that's that's most fulfilling when when you see the appreciation and the fans and then there's this concert series that that we do uh, a lot of art for out there in Los Angeles um, sponsored by Red Bull Sound Select it's it's called 30 days in LA where in the month of November they have a different concert on every night of the month so instead of having like a festival like Coachella that you go to, or Bonnaroo, um, or Lollapalooza, like out here. Um, they, they just spread it out through the whole month. And it's, it's a chance for people to see artists in smaller venues that you wouldn't necessarily get to see. And it's across the entire spectrum of music. So you have you know electronic, or rock, or hip hop, or R&B all together. So a lot of the art that we create for Red Bull Sound Select is about um, togetherness and the way uh, music kind of drives us together and connects us. Because no matter you know, what culture or part of the country you're from, we all still have like, uh, a musical history. And then through art and design, it's really lovely to be able to kind of have an impact on your city and your environment. And this is next to the Staples Center out there in Los Angeles that's like uh, a 20-story mural. So just to actually you know, have a physical, literal, um, imprint of, of you know beautifying our world you know through art and creativity for this version we um, hired a bunch of different uh, artists to do a different artwork for every show of the night the first year I worked with Red Bull I did all 30 of the artworks myself and then we kind of like figured out that maybe we should kind of like also bring some other people into the mix too but it's about kind of like um, extending this experience past this moment in the theater, you know, like once the person, you know, leaves the room, once the band leaves the stage, you know, how do we kind of um, 
take that experience further. And, and that largely, I believe, is through what you can touch and, and what you can um, cherish. And it's that, that keepsake, that talisman that reminds you. And then there's all these other touch points of design that you do with, that we do for the, the show when you're walking in on the theater and, and the floor stickers and all the art was flashing on these, these TVs when you come in to kind of just kind of create more of that kind of um, excitement and experience at, at all touch points. And this is, I don't know if you guys, uh, this is uh, last, last May uh, in, in Alabama. So again, you know, bringing that experience of the festival uh, home through design. And we're currently, this is our, we're currently working with the jazz artist Esperanza Spalding. We've done a lot of work for her. That, that's her on, on, the, um, on the right playing at the White House. She's an incredibly brilliant, Grammy-winning, uh, groundbreaking artist. And how do you go about um, creating artwork for someone who's on such a, uh, elevated uh, artistic level and and you know it's our task as designers to whether you're um, designing for you know a hospital or a charity or a museum you know to tell that story through design and to make um, the client's message come through and connect through the, the actual physical piece that that you touch so she's highly highly artistic so we kind of used a lot of ingredients to tell her whole story um, through, through the visual and also, again, to, to make pieces that people wanted to cherish and keep, but also kind of uh, reflect the eclecticism of, of her voice musically. And, and you're making art about somebody else's art, so it's, it's kind of like this delicate tightrope, you know, that, that you have to kind of honor what their art is about, but also help them find the best path to what's the best way to tell that story. What I do for Esperanza Spalding is going to look very different from from what I do for Wilco. Uh, this record, this is her new record. Um, we just, I just did this art uh, three weeks ago. And um, the week after this, um, September 9th, uh, she's going to be doing an engagement on Facebook, uh, on Facebook Live, where for 77 hours, she is going to completely nonstop create a record record, write, produce, make a whole album, all live. You're going to be able to see it all happen in front of you, live stream. Um, and uh, her, her music defies kind of any kind of um, traditional labels. It's, it's jazz, but it's not jazz. It's, it's very kind of, um, it's on another level. And so we, my office was, Two weeks ago, we were right about to leave for lunch, and it was really late in the day, and then Esperanza called, and she says, I need this art, like, today, you know, <laughs> can you? And, but the fact that she's doing this 77-hour um, experiment, I kind of found like it was, I was also traveling with my wife that weekend, so I kind of had to do it like that week. I, I pretty much did it in seven hours, which was kind of fun doing it for the 77-hour challenge. After the 77 hours, all the master tapes and everything are going to be destroyed. That's it. That there's no more kind of existence of it. And there's going to be 7,777 copies available. Um, and so obviously there was um, a lot of ideas of um, exposure and um, development and telling the story. But this was another kind of like innovation of, of how can we make the connection to the art and paying attention to the art um, and the creation of the art, something that's, that's more valuable than just the fleeting passing moment. Um, so from, from Blue Note to Brahms, you know, we, we like to kind of create things that, that stick with people and that are memorable for people. And the last project that I'll talk about, I don't know how I'm doing on time, is a, is a project that is, is very dear to my, to my heart. Um, it's a project, a book that I'm authoring uh, that will be coming out next year on Prestel. It's a design history of the supersonic airplane, the Concorde. Uh, how many of you know about the Concorde? Yeah. Okay, so, so a few hands in here. Um, and what it is, is they, they it, it was a very, very fast passenger airplane. It was the only supersonic passenger airplane. That, what that means is it flew twice the speed of sound. 
uh, more than double the speed of regular airplanes. And it was created at a time of deep optimism in the world, kind of like the same spirit of the golden record. Uh, you know, we can go farther, let's put up humankind on the moon, let's, uh, you know, is at the dawn of the jet age, we, we, you know, we are going to make society better by getting people to their destination uh, faster. For a lot of reasons that I won't go into, this Concord didn't become a commercial success. Um, and there was a lot of like geopolitics. But what was going to happen was all the airlines were going to have them. You know, United Airlines, American Airlines, and you could just take, you know, Kansas City to Los Angeles. It's a three hour flight. So that would be an hour and 15 minutes um, to Los Angeles. And when the commercial viability didn't really work, the airlines decided, well, let's create just the ultimate flying experience and the ultimate travel experience. And they did that through design. They, they hired the world's best designers, Raymond Lowy, Andre Putnam. Here's Queen Elizabeth, um, a, a much younger Queen Elizabeth, Terence Conran. Uh, yeah, she's even like in this mini skirt, which is like, oh my gosh, the queen. Um, <laughs> And uh, they created this, this whole ecosystem of this like ultimate experience that um, changed the way you know, people would, would, would experience travel. Um, that 252.59, that's the fastest Atlantic crossing. So that's just under three hours from New York to London. And uh, it, flaw, it flew at 60,000 feet, where regular airplanes are at 30,000 feet. So what that means is that the sky is black when you're at that height. You're at the edge of the stratosphere. And you're so high, you can see the curvature of the Earth. Um, and the aircraft itself was a beautiful object, just by virtue. I mean, it was, it was designed in this shape because of the, the physics of the aerodynamics. But it became a very kind of like graceful swan, kind of bird-like thing. And, and now, and part of the reason why Concorde didn't succeed, it, it became about speed versus size. And now you look at like the A380, which looks like a big hot dog, you know, it's, it's, it's very unglamorous, where this was this kind of like beautiful arrow or swan or bullet kind of flying through the air. So I've been collecting a lot of the ephemera that um, kind of made up that experience, that everything that people touched from the napkins and the forks and the silverware, you know, from the lounge to the menus to the tickets, everything was of value. Everything was on the, the finest paper the finest materials, the seats was, were, were, you know, these beautiful calf leather. Everything was, was kind of, you know, the ultimate experience. And we're curating that to share this world. It was very hard to get on the Concorde, and, and a very rare, it was, the tickets became very expensive. Um, and so not many people flew on it. Uh, so the book will kind of showcase the, the, the value of the experience through the story of the design. Um, that I, I did go right before they ended it um, on my 30th birthday, and that, that's my photo from uh, up there. So you, you get a much different kind of like global perspective when you're up there. And then when you're landing, you come back down to 30,000 feet, and you're kind of like, oh, wow, the, the, like the difference was kind of. And then they also slow down as they're coming into the airport and just felt kind of like disappointing. You know, <laughs> but uh, it was kind of like disappointing that we created that. That's my photo collage from my trip on my, my birthday. Um, we created this uh, thing that that was was let's do something better. Let's let's make life here on Earth better. Let's 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 make it better. And, and it's kind of sad that um, we kind of went backwards a little bit, you know, and like when, you know, we, we've all flown Southwest, you know, and yes, it's very convenient. It's like the songs in the pocket, you know, you can, you can get anywhere, anytime, <laughs> you know, you walk right up to the airport and, and get to Rhode Island if you need today, you know, but it's lost that specialness of experience. So we made these silkscreen posters, again, you know, creating this art uh, for something for people to value uh, and appreciate. Um, and tell that story. So just wrapping up here, back here at um, JPL, the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. This is the vehicle assembly room. This, in this room, they've built every craft that our country has sent out into space, every probe. These are the mission patches up on the wall for every probe that they've made in there. Um, they're actually building a spacecraft right there. Very clean room. Um, indeed.
But every Voyager probe, or this is the Mars rover Curiosity, everything was built out of that same aspiration, of great inspiration, of great creativity. It's all very difficult to um, do these things, these endeavors. This photo was taken by Juno just earlier this summer. We create so we can unlock the mysteries of the universe. And in doing so, we really learn more about who we are. And in the process, we make our lives more valuable. As we learn about you know, who we are, we, we enrich our lives. And this image was taken by Cassini uh, also this year. Um, just later this month, the space probe will crash into the surface on Saturn. Uh, it, was, it was a remarkable endeavor to get these pictures of Saturn so we can enrich our understanding of our own planetary neighborhood. Getting here was not easy. What you do as designers is not easy. Working as creatives is definitely not easy. But as you walk into JPL, there's this sign that reminds you to dare mighty things. And that without that aspiration to make things better, like on the Concorde or the Golden Record, or whatever you're creating in your day-to-day -day work to make the human experience valuable, um, you have to dare to do mighty things. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.